Hey guys, welcome to today's tutorial. Um, today we're going to be talking about spawning random objects at random positions um, at random times. Um, this is my first Unity tutorial um, and we'll be using C Sharp um, and some normal game object stuff. If you're new to coding, um, this is probably an intermediate uh, level tutorial, um, but I'm sure you can get by copy and pasting and learning things from it if you have never coded at all before. Um, so let's get into it. So why would you need something to spawn objects at random times, at random places, etc., etc.? Well, if you have a game such as a, a zombie game and you have um, endless enemies coming at you, you might need this. Or um, the game that I have recently created called Protect Creature Killer, which is available now in the Play Store and Apple Store. Shameless plug. Um, there are basically enemies coming around at all times. Uh, it's an endless game. Um, and I used this um, and wrote this code um, and it took me a long time to do um, and actually figure out how it is done. So I wanted to kind of share this and how you do it. Um, so if you have a, an, if you want enemies to be able, basically be able to be spawned um, over and over again for a period of time um, and endlessly, then this is how you'll do it. Um, so here we go. So here we are just starting in Unity. There's nothing special, we just have a plane. Um, and the sun, um, we can zoom in on our plane here or not. Um, but what we're gonna do is we'll just add um, a game object or create an empty. Um, we're just gonna call it spawner. Make sure the positions are at zero, zero, zero because it's just gonna be in the middle of the scene. Um, and what we have right here um, in your game, I had enemies, I had multiple enemy um, objects. These all have their own um, pieces of code if we put them in the game. Um, all he's going to do is move um, in one direction endlessly. Um, for a practical setup, um, you may want him to look at the player constantly, so he's tracking the player. That's really up to you how your enemy AI works, but we have two different kinds so just so that um, we can differentiate them too when we're spawning them. Um, so let's go ahead and make a new script. You can see I've already tried to make a few before. Um, so we're just going to call this one spawner open it up and go ahead and get rid of these comments um, we don't need them um, so let's go down and we're going to add a couple variables to start out first we're going to need a public game object um, and we're going to make an array um, we're going to call this enemies enemies um, and the reason we have these two things uh, makes it an array which means we can add multiple game objects to one variable um, so you know, if you're spawning multiple enemies, you're going to have more than one. Um, and so this way you can um, just use one variable instead of using multiple game objects to access which one you want. Um, we're going to add a uh, public vector three. We're going to call this spawn values. This is going to be used for um, our boundaries or the values we need. Um, when we're spawning the object, so how long you want it to be, how long of an area that they can be able to be spawned in, um, that's what we'll need with this number. We also need a float value called spawn weight. Um, so we'll make a public float, call it spawn weight. Um, when we get into our coroutine, this will be very valuable. Um, and we can also make one, um, we'll just make this one an int so we can contrast the two. Start weight, um, and those will make sense in a second. We're going to add two more float values. I'll just put them right here. We're going to make one called spawn most weight um, and spawn least weight. So these are going to be um, two float values that we can fluctuate between and basically decide um, what time increments we want our game objects to be spawned in. Um, and so this is good for now. We'll probably add a couple more variables when we come back. Um, but let's go ahead and make some things happen. All right, so for this, um, what we're gonna need is a coroutine. Um, this will be able to spawn objects over and over again. And a reason a lot of people use coroutine is for something called wait for seconds, which is um, very useful and very nice to use. So to use a co coroutine, we need to add an IE numerator. You get to name your coroutine whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it spawner, um, add parentheses or brackets. Um, and then we have in here. So what we're first gonna do um, is add a wait for seconds. So how you're gonna do that is you're gonna do yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And wait for seconds, what it does is um, probably quite obvious. Um, it waits for amount of time. Oh, I just realized you can't name 
um, your cover routine the same as your script name. So I'm just going to call it um, uh, Wait Spawner. That's a good name. Okay, so what wait for seconds does uh, is quite obvious. It waits for amount of time um, before executing what's ever below it. Um, you can put um, values in here. You can wait for one second, two, three, whatever you want. Um, I don't believe you can actually put float values in here, um, and we want to control this um, through our hierarchy or our inspector up here. So what we'll do is we'll just use um, our spawn, or excuse me, our start wait, um, and put that in here. So we'll be able to um, basically control how long before it actually starts um, spawning objects, and that's what that will be for. So down here, we're gonna make a while loop. Um, and if you've ever used while loops before, it's while usually a bool is true or an integer value equals something, some sort of number. Um, while true uh, basically just means it's gonna be true forever. There's no bool value in here, so while true is true, it's always true. Um, nothing will ever change. So if you want this to basically be broken or if you don't want the curve routine to go on forever and you wanna stop it, um, you could add a bool value. We can go public bool um, uh, start, or we'll just call it stop. Um, and as long as stop is not true, this while loop will run. Um, and if it's true, it'll stop. So we can do that, um, or you can just do true, um, but we'll just leave that in for now uh, as an example. Okay, so now we need a number basically to pick which enemy is going to be spawned. So what we need to do is make a number um, to decide which enemy will be spawned. We're just going to do an integer value, um, and we're going to call it rand enemy. Um, and if you don't put public or private, it's always going to be private. Um, and this doesn't need to be a public value, so we'll just leave it as such. Um, and basically what this is going to do is pick a random enemy every um, every time it runs the coroutine. So what we're going to do is make this variable equal a random number. And how you do that is you do random dot range. Um, and then in these brackets, you put your min and max values. So we have um, zero and two. And what that means, um, since we're using an array, um, if you have ever used array, arrays before, the beginning is zero and the end, or the next one is one, so your second object is one. Um, but when you're using random.range, um, two uh, is basically your last one. Um, you're not ever accessing two, so you're, um, when you're picking a number, it's picking a number between zero and one, but you put the um, number after it. So it's only gonna pick a number between zero and one to decide which object it is going to pick. Um, if you have more enemies, you'd put um, obviously more numbers of which object it's gonna pick. Um, but that's how it's going to decide which enemy to spawn. Next, we need to decide where the object is going to be spawned. So we're going to make a vector three. And we're going to call it spawn position. And it's going to equal, oops, sorry, equal a new vector three. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, random dot range. Range. Um, this is in your, this is the minimum spawn values dot x spawn values dot x. Um, and then, so that's your first value. So what we're basically doing here is we have spawn values up here, which is a public vector three. We'll be able to choose between three variables um, of a, basically a space. And it's um, what it's doing to decide um, where it's gonna be spawned is just taking the x values here. Um, its minimum is the negative, and its uh, positive is up here. Um, so this is just for the x values. So the next one is our y. We don't want any random values for spawning y. If you did, you'd put them right here. Um, but we're going to have it at 1. It's going to spawn at 1. Um, and we're basically going to do the same thing um, with the z values that we did for the x. So add a space here. Um, we can zoom this out a little bit and we're just going to click or change these to Z um, to get our Z values in here. Um, and we need to add another bracket and close it. So what this is doing um, is using spawn position um, and picking where it's going to be spawned and it's picking this position by making a random um, value of your spawn values uh, at your X coordinate and your Y coordinate and it's going to keep um, Y at 1. Okay, so we're going down for the next thing. And we're actually going to spawn the objects. So we're going to use instantiate. 
So what instantiate does is basically push your object in the scene. Um, it's gonna just spawn uh, an instance of it or whatever it is. Um, so what we wanna spawn is what we have to put in first. So we're gonna put enemies, which is our game object variable. Um, and since it's an array, we need to decide which one inside of it it is. If we wanted the first object, we'd put zero, because zero is the first one. If we wanted the second one, we'd spawn um, the second one, which is B1. But we want them to be random. And since we have this object, or this, excuse me, this variable right here, um, picking a random number, um, we can feed that through. So every time it runs through, it's going to pick either zero or one, um, and it'll pick between the two objects. So this is what we want to instantiate. All right, so now we need to decide where it's gonna spawn, um, what position it's gonna spawn out, and we're just gonna use the variable spawn position, um, and we're going to add um, just a transform point, um, transform dot transform point, um, and you can just make this zero, zero, zero. Oh, sorry, no semicolon. And then we're just gonna pick the rotation. If you have a specific rotation you need to do, um, you'll have to maybe use a quatern quaternion value, um, but you can figure out how to do that on your own. Um, so what I'm going to do is just make it the game object. This is the the spawner itself, transform dot rotation, and whatever the rotation of uh, this object, our spawner here, is what, um, or is how these enemies will be spawned or rotated. All right, so that's pretty much it for the instantiate. Um, those are all our variables and all of the places it will be spawning and what it will be spawning. Um, so what we need to do now is basically decide how long um, it waits till it will spawn again. Um, and so we're going to use yield return new, wait for seconds again. And this time we're going to pass um, spawn wait through it right here. So spawn wait right now is basically... Um, one variable over and over again. So if you want it, um, an object to spawn every second, it'll do that. Um, but what we can do with spawn wait is make it a random time as well. Um, and the best way to do this, oh, excuse me, not in start, it would be in here. Spawn wait equals random dot range again. Um, and for our min or max, we have spawn most weight, spawn least weight. So let's use least as our first variable and most as our second for our max. Stop that there. So what it's doing is it's constantly making a new variable, or excuse me, it's constantly making a new float value for this. Um, so basically over and over, it's just gonna be a random time that it uh, will pick between these two numbers that we set. So now that we've finished uh, most of our code, what we're gonna do um, is we have to actually run this coroutine. So we'll just do start coroutine. Um, and then in brackets, put your coroutine. So it's wait, spawner, um, give it brackets inside, and stop it. So let's click save. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our script to our spawner object here. Here we go. So we have an array of enemies. We'll set this to two, excuse me, two. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and pick them out. We have game objects in here. We have a blue one and a red one. Put those in there. Um, so our spawn values uh, is basically we're going to pick how wide it is on its x coordinate, how wide on the y. Um, that doesn't really matter. We're not spawning y, and how wide it will be on the z. Um, so I'm just going to pick maybe a value of 10. You have to space this out for how um, or what you want really. Um, I'll show you what it looks like if it's at one, or you can play around with those as well. And I'll make this just at two. So spawn weight. Um, this is actually, we don't really need to set this because it's going to be constantly changing, um, but we need to set these. So we're going to at least wait um, half a second and the, or excuse me, at least wait half a second and the most it's going to wait is two seconds. Um, and your start wait, this is how long it'll wait before it spawns. So let's just make it uh, say one. Um, and this bool right here, if we, I guess, set it to true, then it'll stop spawning. All right, so now that we have all of our objects in here, let's go ahead and click play. All right, and as you see, um, we have um, basically random game object spawning at positions. We can go ahead and I believe change these on the fly so we can change our X value to one. Um, if we change it to one, they're all gonna spawn really close together. Um, if we change the Z to one, um, that'll do the same thing, the same effect. Um, we can spread it out a little bit more. 
Um, you can also see in here our spawn weight is constantly changing. That's because it's an update. Um, it'll constantly be moving. Um, you can change these. We can make it spawn really fast. So it'll be 0.1 and 1 or even faster than that, 0.2. So now they're just constantly spawning very aggressively. <laughs> uh, we'll change that back to a better number. Um, and so that's how that works. And uh, if you want to stop it, we'll go ahead and I'll show you how obvious it is to stop it. They're spawning really fast right here. Um, you click this bool variable and they're done spawning forever. Um, and that's basically how you do it. Um, so thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Um, I hope you learned something. Um, if you have any questions about this spawner in particular, um, please leave a comment down below um, and look out at this channel for more Unity tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.